Hey, welcome everybody to FFG Live. I'm Matt Holland, and I'm here with Tyler Parrott. Hello, friends. The de developer? Yes. Developer of, <laughs> it says designer, developer. Same thing. Of Legend of the Five Rings. We're here to talk about the Crab and Dragon clan packs that I know a lot of people are excited for, have been kind of waiting to find out when they're going to be here. We got some news on some of that, hot off the presses, uh, and maybe some other cool stuff here on the stream. Yeah. So, Tyler. Let's talk about Defenders of Rokugan. I know we've been talking a lot with the community about the Emperor's Legion, the yep. Lion Pack, and how that's going to be available to play with at Worlds. A lot of people had questions about Crab. So let's tease some of the stuff upcoming for Crab. Sounds good. Uh, well, first of all, it won't be uh, legal at Worlds, but you might get to see some fun Crab stuff at Worlds, maybe? Yeah, more, more on that later. <laughs> um. Yeah, so... Uh, What's different about this? this the, clan the crab clan pack is, falls in the tradition of all of the other clan packs, which is, hey, let's take a theme of crab and focus on it, give a little bit of support for, or at least an acknowledgement of other crab themes. But sure. the one that I wanted to focus on, of course, was defending the wall. Uh, so there are six different Caillou wall uh, holdings that fill up your provinces, and you can kind of create a little, like, this is the wall that I built. And look, this piece goes with this piece, which goes with this piece, and they're all in a line, and it's great. Nice. Um, and then the Stronghold, of course, helps you play your characters when your provinces are full of holdings. Um, but yeah, for the most part, uh, the design of the wall was such that, because it's such a huge entity, I didn't want to just have one card for the whole sure, wall. Sure, it's not very epic um, to be... It's not, right, exactly. Um, and also, this gave me a, a fun design space where depending on which pieces of the wall you put together, you have different mix Effects and match combinations. And, and That's cool. They interact in different ways. So the idea is you can have this wall, but in every game, the wall is going to come together in a different way, basically. Cool, cool. So we've got some cards to talk about, cards that I believe you have curated personally. Well, yes, I wanted to make sure that you guys got to see cool stuff, but also that I got to hold on to some cool stuff to show you later. Sure, so our first one is already up here. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of the characters previewed so far from this pack. What are the themes that you wanted to try and hit with the Dynasty characters that are included in this pack uh, that aren't necessarily related to all those holdings? Sure, so uh, obviously a lot of them are focused on um, interacting with holdings. So we have characters that uh, help you play characters when you have holdings out. You have characters that help go get your holdings. You have characters that go find other characters. But also, you just have characters that want to defend, right? So this, uh, so Hida Sukune is the missing piece to the trilogy of the clan champion's three children. Uh, we saw Hida Yakumo in Children Empire. We saw Hida Oushi in this pack earlier. So people and are really excited about Sukune. Yeah. Now we see Hida Sukune. And the, uh, the general theme you're going to see on all three of them is that they want to defend and they want to fight in military conflicts. Sure. Um, Oushi and... Uh, and Yakumo go together because Yakumo can fight in every military conflict. Uh, and Oushi gives you more military conflicts to fight in. Um, Sukune and Oushi go together because Sukune, while he's defending, can get you the cards you need to successfully defend, which then lets you trigger Oushi so you can counterattack again. Um, so it's, it's a little engine between the three children so that Sukune can help you win your defense, which Oushi can then use to give you another military conflict, which Yakumo can then go fight in. And then uh, if you have the clan champion out, he'll just sort of be a big military number to win all your conflicts for you. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, speaking of all that talk about the wall, we've got this Caillou Forges. Yes, so uh, we're going to show off two more pieces of the wall today. Um, the, the, the final missing piece you'll just have to wait on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, but uh, one element of the wall is because it's very mix and matchy, uh, and because all of the wall pieces are limit one per deck, it's not consistent, uh, is often not going to be consistent. Sure. Um, so I wanted to have a piece of the wall that helped you get the wall pieces that you wanted at the right time into place together. Just to increase that consistency a little bit. Just Still a little not bit. not as much as being able to run you know, multiples, I guess. Right. Um, but it also has another feature, which is uh, kind of important, which is that it just has a big three in the upper left corner. Um, plus three province strength is not a lot. Um, or is a lot for a holding. Uh, sure. Most holdings are zeros and ones. Um, and so this is just a, a holding that's going to make your provinces hard to kill. Uh, and while we've seen this effect before, this, you know, it's a holding that gives a lot of province strength, um, this one has the advantage of being a Caillou wall. And as we've sure. seen, being a Caillou wall is important because the other Caillou walls provide synergy for it. 
Certainly. Um, and also, it provides you an outlet for if your opponent does have an overwhelming attack and is going to break your province, you can go turn it into something else so that your Caillou Walls are safe in your deck. Sure. And then they can come back at later. That's pretty neat. Speaking of these different options and how they synergize, we've got Third Whisker Warrens. What are the specific kind of beats you wanted to hit with the various parts of the Caillou Wall? In um, yeah, so you'll notice that I'm kind of hitting uh, a bunch of different pieces and, and, and concepts for the wall. We have the Watchtower of Valor, which rewards you for winning as a defender. Uh, we have the um, Northern Curtain Wall, which makes your Caillou Walls harder to break. Uh, we have the River of the Last Stand, which taxes your opponent, punishes your opponent for attacking your walls. Um, and now we have the third Whisker Warrens, which uh, is just yet another way to reward you for putting uh, wall pieces, which are holdings, into your provinces, and thus preventing you from playing characters. Uh, the third Whisker Warrens is a fan favorite space uh, in the lore because it is the home of a Nazumi tribe, and the Nazumi uh, rat people are, uh, they have a bunch of fans in the in in the community, the, in the community, and they're also uh, a a cool, unique feature of how the Crab Clan does their defending of Rokugan, right? Because they have allies who the rest of Rokugan would look down on, but here they've embraced they them and said, use. "Well, you know, these Nazumi built their home underneath our wall, so we're gonna work with them, and sure. you know, those tunnels that they've." had or can be very effective ambush points. So when your opponent sense. attacks your wall, all of a sudden you're playing characters out of your deck. <laughs> and uh, they didn't see them coming. So with all these cool wall effects, uh, it seems to be tradition that the other clan cards in this pack will counter that traditional crab strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, who is Agasha Hiyori? Is that, is that yep. correct? Yep. And uh, why are they included? Uh, so, a dragon for you. Yeah, so uh, here, I'll just clear out some of these other cards so we don't run out of space. Um, so we're going to show off the dragon character in the crab pack and the crab character in the dragon pack. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do for each of the uh, off-clan characters, sure. um, of course, as is traditional, they counter some element of the crab clan, right? So if dragon is all about... Hey guys, give me a quick second. We've got the Nazumi chewing our audio cables. Oh, second. no! <laughs> uh, we will hold out until you can hear us because if you can see you us though I think they can hear you right can now. you hear us can you hear us well we'll find out when uh, when chat our right right reacts ooh those are cool I got, some, I got some neat stuff that they can always just show if they can't hear us but it looks like it's better can I hold one you can, you can hold one yes oh, people so are really cool. wondering what's going on at the table here oh we're going to show you later <laughs> um anyway are we good? Can you hear us? Oh, yeah, they can hear you. We're just still... No, people, they are. people are figuring it out. People figured it out. The prize for making the main event. Yeah. All right. Everything's back. Everything is back. You can hear us now. We are taking that opportunity to mind that these are the uh, some of the world championship participation prizes. They're these slick metal rings, enamel color on both sides, and pretty slick. Very cool. Very cool. We, had, we brought those along just in case. <laughs> just while. in case we ran into audio troubles, because <laughs> we know what happened. Yeah, you're good. I only have so many things I can. Uh, I can. I can. You got audio again. Hello, hello, hello. All right. All right. 
We have Looks like we're working. returned. Much better. Hoo hoo! All right. Sweet. All right. <laughs> now, we were talking. We were about talking about Agashiyori. We were talking about the uh, the dragon anti crab card. Yes. Uh, so if the dragon clan is all about attachments, and attachments is also a sub theme of the crab clan, uh, as we have learned over the past few tournament seasons. Um, so it made sense that the dragon card that would counter the crab clan would be somehow attachment related. Sure. Um, dragon doesn't need don't need more cards that prevent you from uh, or that discard attachments, um, but it can be really valuable to turn off an attachment the turn that it matters, uh, especially for fan favorite cards like Reprieve. Right? It's very common for a player to throw down a reprieve at the end of the conflict phase to keep their character around. Yeah, somebody's talking about blanking reprieves here at the beginning of the fate phase. Yep, that is exactly the, uh, the primary use case of Agasha Hiori. But she does a bunch of other things too. Um, she can blank attachments that are on your own characters okay. that your opponent tries to, to um, prevent so you from negative using. Negative attachments. Right, negative things. attachments. You can use it to blank powerful weapons like Jade Tetsubo at the beginning of the conflict phase. Um, and because it triggers at the beginning of the conflict phase and you spend the fate to the ring, half the time you're going to be able to just get that effect for free. Sure. Because if the dragon player gets to go first, they can spend the fate to the ring that they want to attack with and then just get the fate right back. Yeah. Um, as for who Agasha Hiori is, we're seeing a, a Shugenja of the Agasha family. Uh, she's a healer and a bit of a, a doctor, right? So she understands medicine better than a lot of other people in Rokugan does. So thematically appropriate um, as well. And so thematically, the idea that she's healing these negative attachments off of your own characters or disrupting, you know, the like spiritual energies that your opponent is, or that your opponent is trying to use to power up their characters cool. is within her wheelhouse. Well, enough of the dragons. Back to the crab goodness. We've got the strength of mountain. So this seems to be the mountain does not fall, but on steroids. Like, are, do both have a place in decks, or do you feel like this is going to replace? No, no, no. This is definitely not a replacement for the mountain does not fall, which is of course a a, a, a major sort of identity defining card for the crab clan. Sure. Um, this is of course the philosophy card for the crab in this pack. Um, it's supposed to be a big, powerful. Uh, sort of, I'm going to defend everything effect. This is not a card that I expect you to play more than maybe once a game, mm -hmm. maybe twice, but usually you only really need it on the one turn that matters. Um, whereas the Mountain Does Not Fall is a card that you play maybe over several rounds uh, on the one character that matters. Because like this, this is this is designed to empower the all in, the, not the, well, it, Encourages all in defense. This is designed to empower the I'm going to win on defense and then do something with it, sure. with all my characters, right? So I defend with all my guys. My first action is to play this. Now my guys can't move home. They can't be bowed. They're not going to bow during conflict resolution. So I'm basically guaranteed to win that defense. Sure. Let me trigger all of my win on defense effects, and then everyone is ready to counterattack, which your opponent wasn't prepared for. Seems good. <laughs> um, again, it's, it's kind of all of the things that Crab wants to do pushed together into one big card. I gotcha. Now, uh, I'll, uh, okay. I'll, I'll segue into this. Uh, the neutral cards in this expansion all have a single theme. What is that theme you say? The theme is Shadowlands. Uh, so the three neutral cards in this pack are all Shadowlands themed. Uh, this is the conflict card among them. It is a goblin. It is a small one cost goblin that can only fight in a military conflict. And when it wins a fight, it shuffles an entire discard pile back into its own, the uh, respective deck. This can disrupt graveyard strategies or discard strategies like a lion or phoenix mm -hmm. often use. Uh, it can also reset all of your own discard pile if either it's been a long game and you don't want to lose five honor or you know important holding pieces have gotten discarded and you don't have any more rebuilds. Um, or your opponent is running crap and they have a bunch of holdings that they want to rebuild that you don't want them to rebuild, right? So there's just a lot of flexibility with this card and uh, it is the first, it is one piece of the, the, the slowly piecing together of the Shadowlands threats that, you know, you can use if you're dishonorable, but... Uh... Well, before we go on to Seekers of Wisdom, somebody in the chat had a question here, I believe about... about... Hiori? Strength of the Mountain. Strength of the Mountain. Uh, why is this better than Right Hand of the Emperor? Why is it better than Right Hand of the yeah. Emperor? Uh, well, it's certainly more proactive than Right Hand of the Emperor. Uh, so Right Hand of the Emperor, 
uh, if, you're if you remember, is a three cost lion event that lets you ready up to six cost worth of Bushi. Uh, and then if you're more honorable than your opponent, you can play it from your discard pile if it somehow got discarded before you got to play it. Um, the right hand of the emperor is designed to support a, a go wide lion Bushi theme. The idea that the lion have these big armies and then they can use the armies in multiple fights because they have the military authority of the emperor to do so. Uh, this, uh, that gives it more flexibility because you can pick and choose the characters you want sure. uh, and you can wait until you actually need it, right? Yeah. This you have to commit to. This says before you do anything, You're gonna I'm say, going. This is the turn I'm doing. I'm right, exactly. Um, and uh, if it gets canceled or if it gets discarded from your hand, there are fewer ways to use it after the fact, right? Sure. Whereas right hand of the emperor, you could play from your discard pile. It also seems this has no limit to the number of of characters. Not correct. Just, it's not restricted by bushi or the cost. Correct, but it is restricted by defending. Yes. And participating defenders. Sure. So, uh, you uh, right hand of the emperor is powerful because it lets you attack twice. Mm -hmm. This is powerful because it lets you defend once and, and then attack, attack once as well. Um, but you're committed to that defense, which, if you're crab, is what you want to be yeah. doing anyway. <laughs> it's kind of on brand. But uh, it, but the trade-off then is that this also protects you from a bunch of effects that your opponent might want to do that sure. right hand of the emperor doesn't. Right. So they both do similar things, but in different ways and according to the themes of their clans. That makes sense. So, speaking of dragon, we previewed that dragon character. Let's go on to Seekers of Wisdom and starting things off. So, uh, well, uh, first off, they've traditionally been very strong. I mean, as you can tell from my choice. <laughs> How did you approach designing their clan pack? You know, keeping that in mind, you know, not wanting them to become too dominant. Sure, uh, well, the returning meat and master to the clan uh, from the restricted list lately has certainly revitalized their more proactive strategies. Uh, the Dragon Clan pack was one that I wanted to move a little bit more laterally, encourage more play with monks specifically because that's such a major iconic part of the Dragon Clan. Um, but a bunch of other my, of a bunch of other themes in Dragon get you know a card here and a card there sure. to, to support them. Um, as well as getting some notably absent characters into the game. Um, okay. So the first card that we can show off is the one card that I put in here for the Katsuki Stronghold. Uh, Shiro Katsuki is a stronghold that really needs you to know what your opponent has in their hand. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to begin that process of, hey, what do you have? Okay, I'm going to guess what you have, and then you're going to give me the rings, right? Um, even if you can't... Uh, know what they have yet, you're going to win a conflict at some point, and you're going to claim a ring, and then Perceptive Katsuki can give the ring back to look at your opponent's hand. So now in all of your future conflicts, you know what to be prepared sure. for, you know what to name for the stronghold, and then it's, you can... It's helpful and so, for so many reasons, any of these card games, to know what you're potentially facing yeah. out of that hand. Um, and that's, uh, that's it's, a, it's a mechanic that is both extra powerful in L5R because there's so many moving parts you have to be worried about. Certainly. Um, and also because there is specific support in the Dragon Clan for that basic mechanic, right? Is the Katsuki's hand knowledge going to continue past the Inheritance Cycle and this pack? Um, it will continue to get support. Uh, in every cycle I, I, I explore a, a new aspect or a new theme for each of the clans. Um, but that, but especially when I, can, when I, know, when I pick up on pieces of the strategy that are missing, uh, then I tend to be like, yeah, okay, well, there's room for one or two or three cards for existing strongholds that sure. maybe are just missing what, you know, a little bit of what they need to really explore their full potential. I gotcha. And so this is one of those pieces. So this next character is the Mirumuto Daimo. What kind of consideration goes into designing a character as important as this? And how does he define you know, the theme of, of that family? Um, so the Miramoto are uh, a, a family of warriors. Um, they don't. In in a lot of cases, in a lot of cases, they have their dueling as a sure. sort of very prominent and attention drawing theme, theme, right? But they're also the kind of the entire military arm of the of the clan of the clan. Um, 
And for this character in particular, one of his most defining sort of challenges that he's struggling with as the daimyo of the clan is that he's also, in some cases, the acting leader of the whole clan, because Togashi Okuni, of course, is up on a mountaintop meditating and having visions. Sure. So in terms of like managing the day-to-day -day tasks of the Dragon Clan, that tends to fall on him. And he is kind of alone in that venture. Sure. Um, so uh, a theme that exists within Dragon, but maybe hasn't been explored a ton, is the idea of having fewer characters than your opponent. Um, okay. Especially now that the Lion Pack is about to come out, I expect a lot more decks to have a lot more characters. Okay. Um, so I would not be surprised if the have fewer characters than your opponent theme uh, is a little bit more. Is a little bit more well, is a, has a little bit more teeth because sure. you're more you. guaranteed to have it, right? See, have see. it turned on. In which case, just honoring a guy for free at the beginning of the conflict phase is really good because Crane have to spend one of their best cards on that. You just get it for free. Um, in addition, of course, he has the duelist trait, which is a trait that matters for uh, for Dragon and Crane, mm -hmm. but. Dragon, especially, um, and also he helps prevent or helps uh, buffer against the the very character control heavy strategies that come out of Scorpion and Crane, where they're trying to dishonor your characters a bunch. Mm -hmm. He can help counteract that, as well as just be a, a means by which to be very strong when he's fighting on his own. So we've got a neutral character here. Yeah. So I'll give a little bit of a lead into this character. Uh, the Miramoto Daimyo, uh, the Miramoto Daimyo famously has a son, and famously his son disappeared one day. And we we learned a little while ago through the fictions that his son has joined a heretical sect called the Perfect Land Sect, and believes that his father lied to him, and that the samurai are are a, a problem that is that their clan that all of Rokugan has to deal with and has to overcome. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it would be fitting if. In the same pack that comes with the Miramoto fun. Masahige, we would see his son, Ichiro. And if you'll notice, Ichiro directly counters his, his father's ability. <laughs> uh, Ichiro says each character with one or more attachments on it cannot be honored or dishonored. That plays into the perfect land sect theme of not being honored or dishonored, of being ordinary. Uh, it counters his father because he is actively going out of his way to do so. Sure. Um, Stop it. And also it's a neutral character that can potentially have a really big impact on the game because attachments are It's also are really powerful. a double-edged sword in that it's working for you, but also for your opponent. So is there any particular matchup that that seems really attractive for? Uh, oh, absolutely. Sure. Um, especially if you are yourself playing an attachment-heavy clan, then it's going to give you a lot of resistance to the dishonor uh, strategies of Crane and Scorpion and um, even Phoenix to some extent, right? Uh, it, it can be very easy if you're a dragon player to just be like, here's some characters, I put an attachment on all of them, and now every single dishonor effect my opponent has is completely irrelevant. I don't need to worry about it. Now, I can't honor myself, but that's fine because I didn't have cards in my deck to do so anyway. Sure. Um, on the other hand, you could potentially run it in a more dishonor-heavy strategy where you're like, okay, like I'm not going to put attachments on myself because that's not important, but when I have Ichiro out, I can dishonor you, and now any attachment you put on your character is going to prevent you from getting rid of that dishonor token. Um, and maybe that discourages your opponent from putting attachments on their characters that are already dishonored, which presumably, if you built your deck, you're going to be able to dishonor them before the attachment comes out. Sure. Sometimes that can be hard, easier said than done, but there's a lot of... Uh, you have to uh, start thinking about things in a different way once each hero hits the table, because now... His philosophy is what matters, and everyone will be neutral or ordinary, uh, or else they're going to not play into the dragon's themes because he sure. is kind of like an anti-dragon card, while also playing very well with dragon. And that's very thematic, you know, given his his background in the in the story too. Yeah. Hey guys, you need a quick hold. Quick hold. Philosophy in Kaiba, so you can play at the like. It's the unique philosophiness. We will just uh, show off some War World sweat. Wow, don't spit out your tea all over No, 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 me. we're good, we're good. Man! I haven't seen this yet, so I'm really excited. So yeah, that's the... We have the dice... The nifty little the bag? token bag, bag for it? the... It's uh, not for anything specific. We have, if you want to be a crane player, or if you want to be a lion player, 
Put it, move it a little bit to your right. It could be in front of the. If you want to be neither of those things, I guess. Then you're, you're creative. You're gonna pick one. <laughs> <laughs> we have our our Daidoji. Hold on. You can just hold it up to the camera. It's too big for the close up. Yeah, that's what I figured. It's we have our Daidoji and our Matsu. Surprise. Like, sounds good. Right. Yeah, I think. We're, we getting back? I think my mix board is dying. Oh no! You're, you're good. You're good. Oh, oh so no, mixed board. Out, this could be excellent for your RPG dice if you're playing yes. the, the L5R RPG. Absolutely. That's a great, great use for it there. In fact, that's probably, if I can get my hands on one of these, that's probably what I, I'll I use it for. I feel like there's a decent chance we can get you, you know, at least <laughs> one of those. Yeah, that seems likely. Maybe, maybe more. All right, we got more cards for you. This is the unique Dragon Philosophy in the pack. Uh, kind of represents that signature dueling style. What's what's special about it? What really stands out? Uh, so there's two things to note here. One of them uh, is that Preston Stone absolutely killed it with the art. Uh, the second one is that it is a unique item that is also philosophy, and it is called Niten. So what this actually is is the scroll that contains the that, trees, that right? That uh, that uh, Miramoto so famously wrote. Um, this is supposed to really play up the versatility of dragon and, ver and of dragon attachments. Um, one thing that, of course, it comes to as no surprise to anyone that, of course, the dragon philosophy is going to be an attachment. But really, attachments are one of their is their most defining mechanical feature. Um, and this lets you turn this lets you put down an attachment that is valuable on its own, right? Plus one plus one is solid, good enough. But at any time, you can turn it into any other attachment in your hand. So your opponent maybe knows that there's something there, knows that they have to worry about maybe potentially any attachment that you could have. And if the attachment costs more than two, you got a bit of a discount. Um, flexibility is something that is often underrated in games. Um, and so the ability to have that versatility sure. to just have whatever attachment you need at the moment you need it well then, since it returns to your hand, you can do it again. It's value, very valuable. Do note that it does say max one per round, so you can't do shenanigans where you're chaining knee 10 into knee 10 into other things, because that's just silly stuff. So people are, maybe notice how thick the stack is here. We'll, we'll get to the reason we'll for that, that soon. But, uh, turns out we brought the whole clan pack. No, I'm just kidding, <laughs> no, we didn't do that. Done with the, the dragon for a second. This is the unique uh, crab card in this pack. Yep. And you know they're often big name players when they're in here in the other clans pack. What's mm -hmm. special about uh, about this fellow? Uh, so two things. Uh, number so one, Hida, Hida Kotoe. Kotoe. Uh, so so some fun facts about Kotoe. You might recognize the name from the RPG. Uh -huh. You might also recognize the art from the RPG for that matter, because this was a baller piece of art. It is really pretty cool. Um, uh, Hida Kotoe has the advantage of being a conflict character. Uh -huh. uh, so she's going to show up when you're defending when you feel confident you're going to win, or maybe her three military will help you win, in which case she can just discard any attachment in play. Turns out when the dragon clan is the attachment clan, uh, count, the counter to it is going to be to discard attachments. Um, this gives crab and potentially someone who wants to splash crab into their deck uh, another avenue. We're holding. Go for it. And uh, while it might look a bit expensive to do that, sure. obviously, again, it comes with the additional flexibility of it's a character in play.
I love this, the snap. All right. Yes. Talk again. As far as I'm concerned, every deck box should be magnetic because right? it's, so it's so satisfying. satisfying. Don't slam it that hard. <laughs> we did it. Loud. We did it. Uh, and not only deck box to hold your cards, but There's you've like got a, fancy... a little token box here in the back to keep everything this together. Is... Like, like gotta be the cover. nicest deck box I've ever seen. Yeah, so this is this is still a you know a sample. The actual one will be very similar to this, but subject to change slightly. And of course the Hatamoto icon in the front. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, when I saw this, I mean they are they are really pulling out all the stops, making some cool prize support. Okay, I'm gonna cool. stop I'm gonna stop playing with the rings. Above your awesome. Stop playing with the rings. Really pretty slick, all wood, leather, printed foil graphic there. I can do a little bit of an intro segue for the next thing too, if you want. Sure, sure. Well, before we go, yeah. Tyler brought one more surprise for you here. It's something a little bit different. So, so uh, you may have noticed that we've had a lot of fictions coming out recently, and uh, some intrepid investigators have discovered the title Clan War attached to them. <laughs> Turns out our next premium expansion uh, coming out uh, early next year is called Clan War. And it is a big box, and it has a bunch of cards in it. Yes. Uh, what is it doing, you well, might it's, ask? Well, it's the next premium ex expansion, but it's also, it's a little bit more than just that, right? Uh, it is. So you might remember sometime Sorry. last year, <clears throat> there you go. You might remember sometime last year when we did a beta test of multiplayer rules with Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. That was a very valuable process. We got a bunch of data from it, and we learned a few things. Number one of which, the format is fundamentally fun. Yeah. Uh, number two of which, there, there were a few tweaks that we could do. Uh, but also, I got a big piece of feedback, which a lot of people had, and I thought was good, which was they said, where is 2v2? Where is team play? I okay. want to play with my friends Not against my other all. friends. Right, exactly. Uh, so Clan War is an expansion focused around multiplayer play, uh, three and four player. Uh, it includes a rule book, which contains the rules for playing three and four players. Uh, three player play, go for it. Uh, Three-player play is Enlightenment, of course. People are probably mostly familiar with that. Where'd that hand come from? <laughs> <laughs> um, and four-player play, as presented, is... Yeah, uh, you can show that off, maybe. Um, four-player play is uh, going to be 2v2. Team Conquest is what, it, is what I called it. Um, and this is just how to play with your friends against your other friends. Um, it was a lot of fun to play while we were developing it, and I'm like that sure that thing. a lot of people are going to enjoy it. Um, this box also contains a few unique uh, components that maybe we haven't seen in an L5R product before. Yes. So let's show, show off, off one of them. This guy. I don't really know how Hopefully this is going to work. Hopefully it kind of works like that. Let us know So it isn't. Uh, one element of uh, Enlightenment multiplayer, which I felt was... Uh, cool but not really fully developed was treaties uh, and so we did a couple things with treaties in this expansion number one we made a little uh, treaty pad a little pad you can write what your treaty is and what your promise and what your opponent promises uh, how long it's gonna last how much you're staking on That's it etc cool. it looks beautiful and there's a whole bunch of them I have no idea if this is visible or not uh, so that's that's the first uh, feature. Thing. The other one was that while it can be nice to have a, a known penalty for, yeah, there you go. While it can be nice to have a known penalty for breaking, breaking your treaty, treaty. Uh, which sometimes you got to do, um, it is arguably more exciting uh, if the if the interaction with treaties is more varied from game to game to maybe encourage you to do more, and. Uh, this is especially the case. Some uncertainty makes it a little bit more of a... A little bit more risky, necessarily, if you're going to break that treaty. But also, uh, there's more of a reward, because if you're, not, if, you don't, if, if you're going to lose something, yeah. then maybe I'll get lucky and I'll lose a thing that I don't have any of. And sure. then or there's no penalty. particularly important to you. Either. Or maybe there just won't be a penalty at all. And maybe you know, there will be a penalty, a reward for my opponent, because they upheld their... They're part of the, the of deal, but I don't get punished for it at all. Sure. In which case, now my opponent got stronger, which is bad for me, but also it kind of puts a target on them, right, for the third player in the game. 
Uh, so we feature, we have a, a 12 card treaty deck. Uh, this takes the same basic fundamental mechanics that treaties had in the public beta, but with the use of a new component, it lets us have a little bit of randomization to and a little bit of uncertainty to So just when you what break the a treaty, will be. you draw one of these, or when you make the treaty deal? So when you make the treaty, you get a face down card. You, uh, here, grab that. Grab that pad. Yeah, I'll, okay, I'll put these back. I'm a, I'll put the back up, because the back's really pretty. Well, you gotta show the front, too, because it wasn't a close-up. Oh, it wasn't? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, there you go. I got it. Okay. Do I uh, have it? I think I have it. I got it. You'll take a, you'll take, you'll take your treaty. You'll take your face, your face down treaty card. You'll put them on the table like this. You'll say, here's our treaty. And I, you know, we staked three on it or four or five or whatever. Sure. Um, oh, and then if X it, is the, X is the, the, whatever you, the value that you staked on the treaty. Sure. And then when I break it, if I break it, I'm going to reveal the card and suffer the effects. And now it might be something really straightforward. Maybe I lose X honor. Maybe I lose so much fate, or lose so much attachments, or discard so many cards. Or maybe I have to give a character to my opponent uh, of that cost or less, and if I just don't have one that fits the bill, then they just get nothing. Or maybe I don't lose anything, but my opponent gains X honor, or gains X cards, or whatever. Um, and then they become a target for you know me and sure. my, my mutual, our mutual opponent. Uh, That's a cool little addition to that, to that treaty mechanic. So the idea is to make deal making a little bit more impactful, a little bit more intrigue heavy, sure. right? Because uh, there's always the question of, well, why am I going to agree to a deal if I don't think that my, op my opponent is going to uphold their end of, the bar end of the bargain? Well, now there's a reason for them to uphold their end of the bargain, but you know, if they're playing, if, if they're playing to their outs, then they can accept that uh, then they can plan for maybe at this opportune moment. It doesn't matter if my opponent gains Certainly. five honor. Certainly, I'm going to break this, and, <clears throat> and, and the, the payoff is better than whatever they're going to get. Exactly, because like at the end of the day, I'm going to break a break a treaty if it is going to help me win the game. Certainly. Like I'm not just going to break it willy nilly. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these, because they're more situational, can be easier to play around, even if you don't know necessarily specifically which one. Yep. You got. So to give people a hint of what's in there, let's show a card and... Let's do so. The Crashing Wave, this is a crab card. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on there's with this card. There's some new stuff. And let's talk about that. The first one is there's a new keyword. It's called support. Hmm. What does the support keyword do? I it lets someone know. else pay for your card. Why would someone else ever want to pay for your card? Is well, it a treaty or something? Maybe because it helps them. Interesting. Right? So like, uh, there's, there's a bunch of things going on with this, which is one, if you're playing in team play, uh, 2v2 team play, then the support keyword just lets you and your teammate pay for your cards together, which can maybe help the person who's playing this. Certainly. Maybe they don't have enough fate, so their teammate chips in. Or maybe we're in a three-person free-for-all, and I'm like, okay, well, you're getting attacked, and that's really bad for you. I'll take this attack for you if you're going to help me pay for it, right? Or, and here's the third option, we ignore the support keyword. We say, I'm a crab deck. I want to win as the defender. Nobody's attacking me, so I don't get to trigger my card effects. Attack me now. <laughs> I'm going to redirect this attack to me. And then I'm going to defend, and then I'm going to trigger all my effects. So are all the cards in this box in Clan War multiplayer focused? Or are there cards that are going to be useful in the traditional 1v1 mode too? So uh, most of the cards, maybe like 70% of the cards, okay. uh, are functional in 1v1 play. And okay. Some of them are actually quite good. <laughs> this even has some relevance, although I don't expect it a ton as just an expensive way to funnel your opponent's attack to the specific province you want them certainly, in. Certainly, certainly. Um, uh, most of them are designed to be optimized in multiplayer play, but that does not mean that they're exclusive to that game mode. It does not, seem, does not mean they won't necessarily find a spot. Right. In fact, there are a couple cards whose text is only relevant in multiplayer, but just on sheer virtue of their stats, I expect them to see play. Okay. Um, so, of course, this expansion has cards for every clan. Yep. Uh, it has conflict and dynasty cards. Uh, it has some provinces as well. Uh, those are specifically designed for enlightenment okay. multiplayer. Um, and it's going to escalate the the... 
inter-clan politics and strife. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't call a product clan war if, if it, it didn't, didn't mean some, that uh, the clans were about to go to war. Clan war was famously a, a period of the story in the old, old game, okay. uh, which occurred just after the Scorpion Clan coup, which might sound familiar, where the clans were at open war with each other, which hadn't happened in a thousand years. That's I'm not neat. saying that's going to happen, but I'm saying we did call it Clan War for a reason. <laughs> now, if people want to try out this multiplayer format, do they need to wait for Clan War to come out? No! Uh, so, of course, as you might expect, the... That was lame, Matt. <laughs> come on, give me a break! Uh, as you might expect, uh, the, the fundamentals are going to be largely the same as yep. the, the open beta. So people that have been playing the beta for the past year or so, um, it's still mostly the same game. Uh, but we do have updated rules. We do have a new way to play multiplayer. Uh, and that should be coming out. That rule book, this rule book, in fact, should be coming out digitally before Worlds fairly soon. That's what I am reading on this note sheet that somebody important <laughs> provided. So let's, <laughs> yeah, you should have that with the initial, the official announcement of the pack next week. Yep. So time to maybe bring some multiplayer decks and play a little bit of multiplayer at Winter Court. Yep. So pretty. We do not currently have it on the schedule to get tickets for playing multiplayer events, but you know we'll see. If there's enough interest, then maybe we add it to the list. Definitely possible. Uh, that pretty much wraps up our stream not that, for today, though. Not that you need to earn tickets to play multiplayer because it's just fun. But I do know but how L5R players. I do know like how L5R. Tickets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's, it's, it seems to be a thing among, especially just the card players in general. Well, the people that madness, I'll call the, the people that like to show up to Winter Court uh, are going to be the people that are excited about sure. earning tickets, winning prizes, and the prizes we have are insane. They're so cool. There are several people asking about the draft specific cards because they're they're worried that you oh, yeah. have too much of an advantage. But you're just gonna have to wait for Worlds for some of that. Okay, so here's the deal: the draft specific cards that you don't already know about. Are not at are not at such a power level that I, who already know what they are, and you who don't, would have a power disadvantage. Um, the people who sit down and play are going to be able to use are are going to read the cards. They're going to say, "Cool, this is what they do." They don't. They're not. They're, game they're not designed. They're not designed to alter your style of play. They're just designed to be functionally good, um, and functionally like effective, right? Um, the like. The strategy changing cards are the ones you're going to be drafting, which are just cards you've already seen. So cool. Um, I know you're very excited about the, the, the draft, and I think draft when you is first sweet. pitched it, you're just like, this it is going to be awesome. Sounds like a lot of people online are really excited about it. Yeah. I have heard a couple people might be bringing collections so that they can Train. run additional drafts in addition to the ones that I'm bring, that I'm uh, uh, organizing. Although they may not have access to some of the cards that I have. I mean, how, that's, that's crazy. What could you possibly have? That, I don't know. I mean, I have a box right in front of me. So, <laughs> well, L5R players, you know, Winter Court on the doorstep here. A lot of you going to be coming and joining us at the Fantasy Flight Game Center. But this wraps up our preview of the Defenders of Rokugan, Seekers of Wisdom, and this little tease of Clan War. Yep. So uh, I look forward to seeing those of you who will be at Winter Court. Those of you who are not, uh, you can look forward to some sweet multiplayer play coming to your local area soon. Uh, super soon if you want the rules and uh, a little bit longer if you want the, the product. product. Um, and if you're not coming, we will be streaming Winter Court yeah. on FFG Live right here on Twitch and YouTube. Definitely so watch tune it. in for that. Uh, I Let's think see. we're streaming Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That sounds correct to me. Uh, that sounds, yeah. Off the top of my head, I don't have that handy. I mean, but those are the three days of the main event, right? So we're not streaming the last chance qualifier, and we're not streaming the, the next year qualifier. So Exactly. Uh, we are also streaming in two days on Thursday a Keyforge developer match with another you know, fun sort of <laughs> gimmick to it. So make sure you tune in for that if they you're They do love their gimmicks. Uh, but thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, we'll be back. We stream new content every Tuesday and Thursday, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to ring that little bell wherever it is to be notified each time we post new videos. Thanks to Carolina Game Tables for this sweet table that yeah, we really cool kept table. denting by dropping coins on it. And be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. The links are in the description. The wood is still safe and pristine. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.